opportunity. Yeah. Is it uh, tough to you know move about in a set of eight eight players? And Not really. No, I think it's interesting that we uh, the more people we are, the easier we have our little groups. You know, I've I've become more uh, solitary. Which I like. You know. Become more solitary? Yeah. You're able to withdraw more? You yeah. Find the yeah. Well, how, how, how does that work? Really? I just right. get up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have my own tent backstage and I have my own way of thinking about my day. Uh, I don't sit next to the guys and talk about business or music, you know. It's, it's more people, so you get more variety. And uh, for me, it's a lot easier. thing we wanted clarification on, and I don't know if you can provide this, mm -hmm. he last talked to Bill Bruford yes. not too long ago. Bill was here on his own. Yeah, with his first. band, yeah. He wasn't slated to no. join no. the band for this, no. but you know, he was kind of uh, bummed out by that. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, he was a bit disappointed at not being included in the Well, for team. me the same, so I said I wouldn't do it. Was oh, it right? So it was your doing mainly you lobbied for this? Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I, I mean, the group is eight people. I mean, that's it. That's the story. Mm -hmm. And if we do an album together, I'll be very happy. So I, I need everybody in the group. It's a question of ego. Because everybody has to give a little bit more when there's more people. In. So other people have been responsible for leaving him off? <coughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, as soon as we've done the tour, it's like, oh, let's just be the group again, or in LA, you know, and I said, no, 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 <laughs> you know, we have, we have created a very wonderful musical vehicle on stage, now we have to transfer that to a good record. pair of, say, individuals responsible for designating responsibility in the band, or is it just all sort of naturally coming together? Yeah, when we first rehearsed, we thought, okay, this group will play that song, and then we'll have that play in that song, group four or five, and then we'll do some individuals. So when we started rehearsing, everybody started playing. So we just continued. We didn't, uh, everybody wanted to play everything. So it's, it's everybody, every man for himself, in a way, but with a gentleman, agreement that uh, if uh, it's time for a solo there, it's time for a solo there, and so on. It's this, this sort of give and take. With all members, you know, participating equally, but isn't there a sort of clash as to who will eventually do what? Yeah, I'm, I've always been the director, oh, I see. you know, so I'm the Napoleon. <laughs> so. You know, if something's wrong, I say, okay, uh, Alan, if you play that there, Bill's thing's wrong, so just, could you try it without that part? And then Rick, can you double Trevor here? So, and they try it. You know, they are, they're not stupid. They say, let's try it, you know, because if we don't try it, John, John gets upset. <laughs> He's a pain in the ass, you know. <laughs> but that's my job. I have to stand there in the middle, and it's got to sound great. If it doesn't sound great, I'm not on stage. So I have to be very convinced that um, each person is working good. It's just my opinion, you know? And I respect them, and they respect me for my opinion. So that's the way it works. It always worked like that. It's just that I never said anything. I didn't go around saying, I'm, I'm in charge. But somebody has to be the boss. Yeah, so you're not exactly Robert Fripp, but you're... No, I'm not <laughs> Robert Fripp. No, no. I read uh, some place where Chris Squire was saying he was interested in doing, uh, doing Yes as a five-man unit. Uh, yeah. You, you were familiar with that? Uh, yeah. Idea. You know, the Chris has this very Los Angeles rock group mentality, which is okay, but for the 90s, yes, 
has got to be like an ensemble experience. So if he wants to be a five-piece group, he should go and be a five-piece group. I will now, I'm working with guitar, which I really like. It's very good. For me to do some shows is like different. I'm working with Mexican musicians. I'm working with people from Uruguay. I'm working with Moscow and some symphonic music that I wrote a year ago. So that's what I want to do. So if Chris, as I say, says that he would like a five-piece group, you should make that. But you can't, it can't be yes, because now yes is uh, this uh, orchestra. And it's more, you know, I think maybe I would do ABWH again, you know, Anderson, Bruce, Wakeman, Howe. We might do that again. Because it was very successful, it was very different, it was a little bit more, I'd say, more pure, yes, music. Or what music? Pure. Oh, pure. Yes, music. Uh -huh. uh, it wasn't L.A. commercial. The danger is that when you live in L.A., you become like L.A. <laughs> and you become so very involved in uh, commercial business. And it's difficult, you know. We, yes has never been commercial. Like Genesis is commercial, like you know, some bands are very commercial. But yes has always been not quite sure, which is good. So it's opposite to the name. <laughs> it's stupid, really. Isn't it? We should have been called, you know, maybe, could be, <laughs> not sure. So, how do you want to introduce the next I had read somewhere where in 85, in 1985, you wanted to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the band in style by bringing absolutely everybody together. Yeah. So you said in that sense, the, the, the very fact that you were able to assemble eight, the eight yeah. members must be very gratifying. Yeah, because initially it was just to do two shows, one in Philadelphia and one in London, and make a movie, a video. So five years later, it came together. So. It makes me think that sometimes if you dream strong ideas, it, it comes around. Uh, one thing I must add to your last question about Chris. Chris, to me, is a great bass player. You know, I, I, only, I, I work with, I think, the best of their style, musicians. I only try to work with the best of the style. You know, Steve, Hal, Trevor, Alan, Chris, Bill, to me are the best. I haven't heard anybody near them like these people. So I'm very, very fortunate. So, you know, but I know inside that the yes has got to be, it's got to get better. The next album has got to be better. Um, the next, say, say we continue for another 10 years, if we're lucky, you know, it's got to be better. Not, um, thinking about the past. Uh, no. No point. No, no, no real point. It's always thought of you as if John Anderson is being the defining character of Yes. What to you constitutes the most basic element? What what does it take for Yes as a band to be Yes? Very good rhythm section and a very good um, musical scope, like a landscape of music, and then a lyric that doesn't say too much, but is very uh, positive. And when I write lyrics, I write about my feelings. Um, I don't want to get too political, I don't want to get too radical, I just want to be very clear. So my lyrics, I try to be very Esoteric, you know. So the but the, the 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 gut engine room is a great rhythm section. So we can dance here, move there, and jump there, and jump there. Melody, melody is always always so important. But not like verse, verse, chorus, chorus, verse, chorus, chorus. <laughs> no, just music, you know, it's better. We to assume that long, the lengthy history of Yes, you guys have completely disregarded the times, and 
have just been yeah. faithful to your own? Well, no, no, I'd say 80%, yeah. 80%. 20% the record company, you know, the record company push, you know. Like and in what way, for example? Well, you know, they talk to a couple of the guys, you should be working for uh -huh. So, uh, I, is a point in question. In 1979, I felt that the Yes group needed a year off from each other. We were too uptight, too much ego, too many drugs, too many problems, no good music in the air. The record company wanted a new album, and they really pushed so hard, I left. And Rick left. And then they used uh, Trevor Horn and some of the guys to do an album called Drama, which was a disaster for what I believe was the Yes uh, flag, you know, the Yes style. So after we had a hit record 90125, the record company, well, we need another one, 90, <laughs> well, you know, more and more and more this music. And we did Big Generator, which cost $2 million to make, two years to make, too many drugs, too many problems. I left again because it was not clear music to me. So whenever the record companies talk to, talk to the guys in the band, above my head, I'm gone. Because I know they're doing it for one fact, and that's more money. And believe me, we make some money out of this tour, we make some money out of making records, but that is not the criteria. The criteria is to be a musician. We're, we are the luckiest people in the world. I am. I feel like I'm... God, what did I do in my last life to, to deserve this, this idea of life? It's incredible. And all the time there's music here, music idea. So I have so much respect for the music and the people in the group that the record companies should understand that music is the first thing and the record company can do business. If the record company is the first thing, the music suffers. And that's sometimes happens. Possibly going to companies over artistic control and eventual departure on you on your part. Still you came back. What brought you back to the fold? Well, um, in nine oh one two five Chris came with the music and said, what do you think? I'd been in the south of France with Vangelis and doing some painting and writing. Uh, I had the break. I had a break. I needed a break, so I had one. And then I heard the music. I said, this is really great, you know? And he said, would you sing on it? So I said, well, you know, if I sing on it, it's going to be yes, you know? Because, you know, it's my voice and the lyrics need to be stronger. But he said, look, we think it's a good album, but if you came in, you know, it would be stronger. So I knew that I would be again involved in the yes agreement. So I said, okay, I like, be only because I like the music. You know, I heard the first uh, parts of that song and uh, Leave It and Changes and One of a Lonely Heart and these songs. I said, these are good. This is good music. Uh, the second. Then I left after Big Generator um, and went to do ABWH. You know? So we started ABWH last year, the year before, another album. And we were happening, we were doing this good music. And then um, I was in Los Angeles. <coughs> so I, I spoke to Trevor and Chris. And they weren't doing really anything substantial, you know. They'd written some good songs, you know. So um, there was a sort of two managers talking about, why don't we get everybody together? And I said, wow, this is what I wanted to do four years ago, <laughs> you know. So, hey, you know. So I didn't say, shall we all get together? I let everybody decide. You know, I let everybody make the motion. And then when they all said, okay, it looks like it's going to happen, I said, good. But I don't think, if, if I'd have tried to do it, it would have gone the other way. 
you know, so it was a sort of, everybody agreed individually to do, so the first thing I thought was, okay, we'll make an album, um, let's put an album together, we'll get some super glue, stick it together, <laughs> you know, because the important thing is on stage, can I get these guys to work? And that's when, when we started touring, I said, this is great, you know, this is really very, very special. That's why I would hold on to that special thing, and Chris wants to do a five-piece, then please, go. But the, the yes thing should be this now. It's, it's 20 years and become this. It's grown up. It's like a young man, you know? So it was a baby, and it was beautiful and wonderful, and then it was naughty. <laughs> it was good, terrible thought, you know? So now it's a young man. Let's give it, uh, you know, good thoughts, good consciousness, good music. Let's become it, you know? In some ways, I, as I, I said before today, I was thinking maybe there's a great album somewhere next year, this year. There's one more maybe, maybe great album. It's like I don't really think too much of the past. I'm very interested in now and the music that I'm thinking about now. Working, as I said before, with Kitaro, we're working with the symphony, working with other indigenous Indian people. And the yes thing is like. Uh, I feel we haven't um, hit the top of what yes is yet. I don't know what it is, but I know there's, a, there's an album there that could be really great. Mm. And then people could say, well, hey, they were this, they were that, but boy, they came at the end and did it. Mm. You know, this is, you know, when you see, like, Tyson, you know, he's going through all this rubbish, and, and if he comes back in five years and becomes the heavyweight champ, Everybody forgets the rubbish. You know, when Muhammad Ali became the champ again, they, they forgot that he didn't want to go to war. You know, pe people and, and, and uh, artists especially have got to go through, they're not perfect. You know? So the group is not perfect, but it would be great for it to make that last uh, perfect statement. In regards to uh, union, He's, it's his own personal opinion that sort of uh, veers from the original Yes course mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. albums before that mm -hmm. had been finished products yeah. into themselves, whereas yeah. it's more of a, an amalgamation yeah. of what was happening yeah. before that ABWA studio yeah. and LAS. Yeah. That's an honest the only, the only The one problem with Union is very simple. Uh, the order of songs is wrong. Mm. When I work with it, WH, this band, yes, generator, the, I always know the order of the music. I always know which is the right song on stage. You know, sometimes they'll say, John, we should try that there, and I say, okay, <laughs> but I know it's not going to work. But they'll try it and try it. I said, see, it doesn't work. The audience go, poof you got to give them something, a little bit more, and just take them on the journey. So when they did the Union album, I was, uh, I, I said to the record company, you know, I'm very happy, excited, I need to do the final listing of the, the music. They went and did it without, me, without asking me. So that two things happened. It made me feel very frustrated that a record company would 
take over the listing of the music in, in order, only because there were two camps. You have the LA and the London group. And nobody could decide. I was in the middle, but they didn't find me, they didn't ask me. So I said, okay, but you never do that again. You know, the record company, you can, goodbye. <laughs> Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept that. But it, you know, it was already printed and done. And I said, okay, I listened to it once. And I, I, I never listened to it again. Seems rather cheeky. And Terrible. Yeah. It's, it's an affront to me yeah. as an artist. And uh, then I got a release from them. I got something out of it. But I was very, very annoyed that they would have that cheek to come along and stick it all together. I say it's stuck together with super glue. And that's the frustration. Um, some people like it. That's good. I'm, I'm, oh, thank God somebody likes it, you know. <laughs> because it's in the wrong order. The music is not uh, fulfilling as an album, you know. But things happen like this, you know. I was, uh, two years ago, uh, Topographic Oceans is an album we did in the mid-70s. And there's twenty percent of it wrong, you know. It's something you, not, you know. You make a great piece of music, and then six months later you think, God, I wish I had taken that out and this out. It's too much fat. So I said I'd love to remix it and re and put it on CD because it wasn't on CD three years ago. So I rang up the record company. I, I would personally spend my time, my money, to do um, a re mix edit of the. Uh, Topographic because I like the music very much. And uh, six months later, the album came out on CD exactly as it was. So it's like really talking to a brick wall. You know, you, you don't have any, um, you know, you don't have any control over your product. What about legal records? No, you don't have, because I wasn't with the company, I was with Arista Records. Uh, I just felt that if, you know, the CDs were coming out, and I felt that a good edit would be good for the music not for anybody else, not for the fan not for the record company, nothing just for the music, but it didn't happen so you say, hey Salavi. so you get on with your next project that's why I work in the now and the future, I don't work in the past, you know, I don't think about yes years, the album, the box set I don't think about that it's good and it's good for people who want to buy that it's fantastic because there's something there uh, I was in my dentist in uh, LA and they're playing the old box set I think yeah it sounds good yeah. but I couldn't listen to it all the way through <laughs> gosh you know yeah, I was looking forward to the, uh, the show he wants to ask you what do you have on tap uh, uh, in terms of the, the schedule here on in for, for yes and for yourself solo wise yeah, I'm doing uh, this tour, and we should make an agreement to do some recording in the summer. Uh, my work will be developing with a solo project, working with indigenous Indian people and songs that I've written about. I'm, you know, Carlos Castaneda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I wrote all these songs about him, or not about him, but about my feelings about reading the books. So that's going to be a project this year. When you say Indians, you mean in, in, in Mexico? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to work with them next month. And then I've got uh, a wonderful project to do uh, a concert with Tikitaro <coughs> in Japan, China, Indonesia, Europe, America this year. As well... I have two other things which are very interesting. One is a musical I wrote last year about reincarnation. I wrote it with a guy called Don Black who wrote Aspects of Love and he's doing the new Andrew Love Weber. So he's a good guy. And so I'm being baptized into the theater, which will be <laughs> pretty interesting. And uh, I'm working uh, just this, I'm going to Moscow in, I hope, June. To, to do some recording with the State Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> Vladimir! <laughs> Please! <laughs> so in other words, you don't have much to do with the next few months. No, I'm pretty bored. <laughs> I'm pretty bored. <laughs> <laughs> In, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I think that we, we got what we need then. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just a 
just 